the reason that God exists is that we all have, including myself, and I completely acknowledge it in the book, uh, a very deep desire for God to exist. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're all frightened of death. We all wish there was more meaning in life. We all wish there was universal justice, that evil was defeated and good would triumph. Uh, and therefore we have created this idea over many different cultures. Does God exist? The author David Bleal has been thinking about that to the point of writing a book about what he makes of it called The God Desire. David joins us in the studio this morning. Morning, David. Hello, Stig. I was just listening to that. I was going to say, before, before we get into God, do you want to talk about animal ethics? <laughs> well, yeah, well, there's a big bit in the book about um, how one of the things that I think points to the quandaries that we get into when we think about God is how we think about animals. Uh, because if you actually think properly about animals and you stop thinking about them as a lesser species, but as us, as just another branch of DNA that happened due to slightly bigger brains to lord ourselves over them, we treat them very, very badly. Uh, and that, I think, is a hangover from religion because we think we're made in God's image and they're not. And so therefore we are able to do things like create a race where we whip them, which, by the way, people don't do when they're doing marathons. <laughs> like, in my knowledge, so far, no one's been whipped on the way to 26 miles. That's happening next year. Yeah, maybe it is. It'll be, it's the only thing know, that get so, me around it, I think. It's a kind of fetish version of the marathon. Uh, but it's it, So anyway, the book, so I've had to say that about, because I was listening to that thinking, yeah... I mean, he also said they seem to be trying to create a sort of plant-based culture, you know, nothing to do with animals. Now, that would help animals yeah. if we had a plant-based uh, way of eating because, you know, the genocidal slaughter of animals seems to be something that maybe in 200 years we will look back on as a bad thing. That said, <laughs> the book is not about that But it is a bit about... Because the point you make I think is really interesting is the distinction between God and religion seems to be to run through the book. And, you yeah. know, religion being... You know, God being the sort of ephemeral force you could give any name to religion being the bit of a crude human structure and error yeah. and prejudice. Yeah. And the tension between those two things actually gets to the heart of why it's quite comfortable for some people to be atheists, not necessarily because they disagree with the notion of, a, of a greater forces in the world, but they disagree with organised religion. And there's a distinction between the two. Maybe. I mean, I noticed that, I don't know who wrote this, but there was a uh, tweet that went out saying that I'd be on this show, and it said something like, talking about the probable non-existence of God. Um, and uh, I actually don't think that. I'm an atheist. I, mean, I describe myself as a because of fundamentalist atheist. Uh, I don't think there probably is no God. I absolutely think there is no God. Uh, but the book is about the fact that I think the reason that God exists is that we all have, including myself, and I completely acknowledge it in the book, uh, a very deep desire for God to exist. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're all frightened of death. We all wish there was more meaning in life. We all wish there was universal justice, that evil was defeated and good would triumph. Uh, and therefore we have created this idea over many different cultures uh, and different versions of it, and indeed very non-religious versions of it. So I think that, you know, the monarchy is a version of it. I think football a version of it, we, of things that we can worship, that we project will lead to an ordering process, a morally ordering process that will give our lives meaning. I absolutely believe those are projections. And so when that tweet said probable, that, that's not my opinion. Because you actually think that, I mean, you can't be certain about anything. That's the other point. I mean, you, you... Yeah, but I say in the book, I do actually say in the book, this is like, because the book is, I think most, uh, most believers, not all, I'm sure, seem to like the book. Giles Fraser, who's a big, uh, he, I think he's a vicar, he a vicar uh, yeah. uh, said that he felt it was the atheist book that he'd read that most understands religion. Uh, but there's a bit in it that I would have thought would still upset some believers where I just say, I know that God doesn't exist. Uh, I say I know it like I know that stone is hard and I then go on to upend that because stone is not hard. Stone is just hard from our perception yeah. of it so, being so hard. So you might be wrong. Yeah, I, I might be wrong, of course I might be wrong. But in a way, the whole book is not about the well-rehearsed arguments about, oh, did something exist before yeah, the yeah, Big yeah. Bang? Yeah. And, you know, what about the problem of evil? And all these very long, abstruse, metaphysical conversations that people had over centuries. It's really about only one thing, which is, I quote it, I quote it, um, it was Omid Jalili originally, Omid Jalili, the Iranian comedian. He was in a film that I wrote also about religion called The Infidel, yeah. which is about a Muslim who discovers that he's biologically Jewish. Do look at it on Apple It's very TV. good. Well, thank you so <laughs> much. Anyway, that's so kind. Um, and we were chatting while we were filming that and about him being a Baha'i, uh, which is a religion that believes all religions are part of the same book, and me being an atheist. And he said, but don't you want God to exist? And I said, yes, desperately. That's why I know he doesn't. And that was obviously like just a personal thing for me. But my point is that I have a very intense desire 
to, you know, believe that such a thing exists and to believe that I could live on after my death and that my life would have meaning. And that makes me think everyone has that desire. So we've created a reason why, to satisfy that desire. And does being Jewish impact this? Because I know you yeah. talk about lots of atheists, lots of famous atheists, Richard Dawkins, come from a very sort of non-denominational background. And actually Jewishness is a, is a great heritage part of your life and part of your cultural identity. And that must impact on your view, which is, obviously is a religion as well. Mm. That, uh, yeah, that, no, it completely does. I mean, I, I tell this story in the book about how I was asked to light the menorah, the big candelabra that Jews light at Hanukkah once by my local rabbi. He phoned me up and asked me to come and be the person, and I didn't really want to do it. So I said, sorry to tell you this, rabbi, but I'm an atheist. He said, so am I. I thought, blimey. <laughs> it, but the interesting thing about that is Jews, apparently, 50% of Jews are will say that they have doubts about God, which is higher than most religions. And I think that's because Judaism really doesn't have a concrete idea of a sort of divine character in the way that, well, certainly Christianity does and maybe some other religions. And it's more symbolic and more about the struggles of the here and now. No concept of the afterlife, really. Yeah. Um, and I end up somewhere where I think, well, my identity is very Jewish, as you know, because you commissioned it, for which I am eternally grateful. I wrote a book called Jews Don't Count, which is about how anti-Semitism, in my opinion, is downgraded in the political, in the identity politics conversation. And the feeling of being a, a part of a minority that is persecuted, has been persecuted for many years, means I can't pretend in any way not to feel Jewish, and at times not to feel moved by the religion. I tell this story in the book about how uh, at a funeral, uh, a, a guy, a friend of mine, who a man of science, an atheist, his son had tragically died, and he recited Kaddish, which is the prayer for the dead. And to pretend that just because I'm an atheist, I don't find that incredibly moving. And I find it incredibly moving because of the Hebrew, because it's in Hebrew. It's a yeah. sonic song of pain over many centuries. And as such, the book is not... It's not like the God delusion. It doesn't dismiss religion. It understands religion. It understands how religion and identity are forever intertwined. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really good read. I would heartily recommend it. It's not long. I, I no, it's it. quite short. But then, again, I'm sorry, this is sorry to refer to you again, but you said, why don't you write an essay book? <laughs> yeah. and, and that's worked out for me. I like writing essay books because they're quite short. They're quite short <laughs> and they get to the point and uh, people can read them quickly and understand them. Uh, it's really interesting. David, thank you so much for joining us. Thank today. you. Thanks, guys. Uh, that's David Badil there and his book is called uh, The God Desire and it is out already. And if you like that... You can listen to us. We're sticking asthma. Have you forgotten? Well done. Every Monday to Thursday on Times Radio Breakfast.